Okay, I'm Susan Morris. Um, I'm the coordinator of the Building Design Program and the Sustainability Program, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the Advanced Diploma of Building Design. Now, um, I've got a, I know I've got a few different people in the audience. I've got, I believe that I've got quite a few people that are interested in enrolling in our mid-year, uh, in our mid-year program. So I'll be talking to you, and I think we've also got some people who are very interested in the international side of things and how our international students. Um, um, enjoy Box Hill Institute and the, especially the building design program. So uh, everybody welcome. I can see that there's 18 of you here now. So that's fantastic. That sounds like a whole class of, um, of media people. So welcome. And uh, uh, as you think of questions as you go through, um, just feel free to write them in the chat section. And uh, at, at various intervals, I'll stop and start answering some questions. So hopefully, let's get started. Now, we have a very flexible arrangement at Box Hill Institute uh, in that uh, we realise that some people are very, very busy. They've got full-time jobs, they've got kids at home, they've got um, heavy workloads. So we've developed a program where you can study full-time for two years during the day. Okay, and that is particularly suitable for international students because they need to have a full-time load to come to Australia to study. So full-time two years, uh, is um, starts in February, uh, and if you wanted to study starting in February uh, in the evenings, you would need to study um, uh, part time over three years. So two years is the absolutely shortest time to get through the program. Three years is um, is is pretty busy time for part timers, but the beauty of July start is that we spread the program over a little bit longer. So we we uh, I like to call it the soft start soft finish. So for those people that are thinking about starting in July, it's perfect. Lovely small group. Um, uh, not the hit, the schedule isn't too frightening. It we ease you into the program, and uh, for people who want to study during the day, the program would take two and a half years. Initially, this year, you would be studying on Mondays and Wednesdays from 8.05 to 4.45, and you'd have one Saturday class. And that one Saturday class is to get something called a white, a, a white card. So if you're studying in the evenings, starting in mid-year, you'll be able to um, study on Monday evenings and Wednesday afternoons and Thursday evenings and one Saturday. So <clears throat> in actual fact, that program um, uh, will vary year by year. Um, you would never, after you start the part-time program, you wouldn't have any more afternoons. That program would just go straight into the evenings. And then you can see there, I've got a flexible timetable. So the flexible timetable means that different people have different availabilities and we have a, do have a logical sequence for working your way through the program. So you can, we can sit together and we can build a timetable that works for you. Okay, so as I, um, to be able to, uh, to, do, uh, to come into the class, it's important that um, all our students have year 12 completion um, or if they, they haven't got year 12, then they're mature age students. So, and there's no ATAR requirement. Um, the inter, for international students, of course, there's some, some language uh, requirements and so on, but the international department will be able to talk you through what are the requirements for the students. But ideally, um, we're expecting um, uh, our local students and our international students to have finished year 12. Yeah, I say the mo most important thing about um, making sure that you're suitable for the course is that you're keen, uh, that you don't mind uh, you don't mind computers um, and that you're um, you, you're just very really, you're really interested in buildings, building design, so being creative and being technical. So there's there's all the skills that are required. So let's move on to the next slide. What does it involve? It prepares uh, you to be a, a building designer. You learn about architectural design, sustainability, the construction of both residential and commercial buildings. And you learn all about selecting materials. You learn a lot of software um, because we really are visual communicators. So the software that we offer here at Box Hill Institute, Photoshop, SketchUp Pro, AutoCAD, Revit, 3ds Max, MS Project, 
first rate five, which is a sustainability uh, software that enables you to work out whether your building's going to be six star, seven star, eight stars or more. And Lumion, which is beautiful software for making animations and fly throughs. So that the quality of our, the students work, as you can see, I've got lots of beautiful pictures coming. The quality of the students work from Box Hill Institute is really award winning. And our teachers are amazing in their software skills and their ability to uh, teach you and coach you through all these different programs. So Revit, for example, is all, pretty much all about technical working drawings in 3D and 4D. And uh, yeah, so there's a whole range of fabulous um, software. We, we do have lovely computers here too. At the moment, our students are working from home using their own computers and we we give uh, our timetable never stopped our classes kept running we're doing classes very much like this webinar and we're screen sharing and we're problem solving with our students so regardless of the COVID-19 situation um, we're de delivering education okay let's see so yes, uh, this um, in 2018, uh, this is Surush Maksudi, and uh, he won two awards um, as the best uh, student, building design student in Victoria. One of them was for his digital presentation, and one of them was for his technical working drawings. So uh, his, um, his work is really quite astounding, and uh, his, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so very, very pleased um, with our, with Saruk Masudi. Okay, now, um, excuse me for just a second. Sorry about that. Now, uh, Dina. <clears throat> uh, Dina um, was a graduate um, of uh, Box Hill Institute many years ago, uh, way back in I think 2008 and from learning all about sustainability and building design at Box Hill Institute, she's gone out to take the um, the best residential restoration, the best alteration, best interior design in the state in 2017. So yeah. Pretty, pretty impressed with Dina. Okay, and this is her building that won the awards. And so in the course, you'll learn all about architectural design and the construction of residential and commercial buildings, but we have a real focus on sustainability. So we're leaders in the field uh, in this area. Uh, one of our teachers, Dr. Abdul Ralph, has a PhD in the Embodied Energy of Materials. Um, I've had a, I was awarded a fellowship and I studied overseas, all about passive house design and net zero energy buildings. So what you will learn is how to integrate all the sustainability features into um, a building to make um, yeah, really outstanding architecture. So all of these um, drawings that I'm showing you here um, are examples of our student work. And one of the areas of interest has been cross laminated timber, which is uh, originally a European method of building, uh, now introduced into Australia using Australian timbers. And we were the first to train uh, our building design students to be able to document a building in cross laminated timber. Uh, makes It drives a lot of, um, it's very good for our employment outcomes. Our students uh, were really getting um, uh, picked up very quickly, even before they were graduating, um, uh, at a time when when nobody really knew how to detail in cross laminated timber. It cross laminated timber is like giant plywood. Okay, so and. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit faster, but we're very proud of the achievements of our students. So Paul Morgan won their Drafting Excellence Award back in 2016. And what's interesting, I think, about Paul is he's now a BIM manager for a large construction company and his career has gone from strength to strength. But he has actually come back to Box Hill Institute and trained as a teacher and he's one of our evening teachers. Unbelievably fantastic at software, terrific, um, terrific trainer, and uh, yeah. So, so this this is an example of a technical working drawing. You will see a lot of colourful images, a lot of the um, the design images in this presentation, but. Our students uh, really excel in their technical working drawings. We have a, a big emphasis on subjects like um, compliance to legislation, 
uh, designing safe buildings, OHS requirements. Um, so uh, the technical knowledge that you need to build a compliant building is very important. And there's some more of our fabulous students. So up in the top right corner, you see a technical working drawing, a type of drawing that you would learn to do in this course. Uh, the, um, of course, getting a building, getting a planning permit and getting a building permit are most important skills. And we step our students through all the processes in that. This, uh, this particular project was designed uh, in uh, using the software Lumion, and there's a beautiful animation that goes with this as well. So these are the units of study. There's 19, there's no options, uh, there's no electives. These are the subjects. So some of them are very small. For example, there's a, a, um, a very small unit that only takes six hours to do, and that's your white card. And then there's some very large um, units like integrate digital applications is a very large unit because you'll learn so many software applications. Uh, whatever we whatever program we make for you, it's logical. You start with um, learning how to draw and you start with learning how to construct buildings. And, develop, and we always start with residential and then move through to more complex commercial buildings. And we have a very um, close association with the Victorian Building Designers Association. Uh, they're now called Design Matters. And uh, you can have a student membership with this organisation and they will also help you get a job, which is lovely, and allow you to advertise in, um, to all the building designers across Victoria um, to, uh, to get yourself some work experience and uh, eventually paid work. So they also um, offer a lot of incentive in, in terms of the competition, a good way to get your profile and your portfolio out there. And after you finish the Advanced Diploma of Building Design, you can get a job in the industry, or if you want to further your studies, there are pathways to study in, to architecture. There's pathways into project management. And at Box Hill Institute, we have an advanced diploma of building information modeling. And now this is the next step up in, in the technology around building design. So yeah, so there are definitely um, plenty of opportunities to further your studies. But of course, once you finish, you might just be pretty keen to get out there and get some work. You know, the choices are there for you. Uh, we, um, we have a program uh, is, that runs right through our second and third year, if you're doing third year, where we invite uh, industry experts in to Box Hill Institute to look at your work. So we'll have uh, your work displayed, um, your whole class's work displayed, and you'll have PowerPoints ready, and we'll have uh, sustainability experts, architects, building designers, engineers, and uh, we'll also have access consultants in. So we get a, a range of experts to come in to look at your work and to give you positive feedback and to give you some constructive feedback, but also they're headhunting. So it's an opportunity for them to, um, to, look, to, to find somebody that they think might be a good fit for their office. Uh, yes, and... Uh, uh, we um, we do get some uh, we certainly do get some good praise from uh, from industry. These are the types of drawings that students produce. And here's some of our lovely students. You see, um, uh, it's interesting that the types of students that we um, we get into the building design classes, they're not all 18 straight from school. We certainly have some 18, 19 year olds in the, in the class, but we get a whole range of people that are changing careers, have been in one career or been doing one, doing one thing. And, you know, when your passion really is building design and construction. Um, yeah, so we have people in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, and sometimes even in in their 50s. So, uh, yeah, we do. Re we have a, a really uh, fabulous um, group of students in our class. Right. And um, we're just going to roll through some of these pictures because I'm sure you're getting sick of listening to me. Just look at some pictures for a while. This is an example of first year work. Uh, so residential, planning out their designs. 
first students work on a single story house then they work on a two story house And these are the technical working drawings for a two-storey house built to um, the uh, National Construction Code. Uh, and so uh, in the classes, you'll learn a lot about how to actually build buildings, how to read the timber framing guide, how to read the NCC, which is the National Construction Code, and how to reference the Australian standards. Oops, I jumped over that one. There's another technical working drawing for you. And of course, giving clients a realistic idea on what a building looks like is really important. So learning how to do a photo montage, taking the existing streetscape and then putting the new proposed building in there. So this is all first year work. So by the end of the first year, you'll be able to achieve these sorts of drawings. Uh, so this, um, this type of drawing would be done started perhaps in AutoCAD and then moved through into Photoshop. These are the elevations that go with that project. And uh, initially some of the 3D work that you would do would probably be in SketchUp Pro. Um, so that would be one of the uh, earlier programs that you start learning. Uh, all drawings, all the drawings are done with a combination of software, perhaps started in AutoCAD, a bit of SketchUp, then moved into Photoshop. Um, and then when you learn Revit, we take Revit drawings, we synchronise them into Lumion. It sounds a bit complicated, but we step you through progressively um, so that you can end up creating some really pretty amazing drawing so this 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 work is our final final stage work and uh, that no that is not a photograph in the bottom right of the of the screen um, that is uh, a student's there is the student's ima imagination and the ability to draw realistically 3d in 3d and that's called a render so yeah the work um, that our students do um, is really a pretty impressive standard so I'll go a little faster now, but you can see the amazing effects that um, by using uh, this whole range of software that our students can achieve. Yes, so um, with an animation like this, you would see an, in an animation, see the birds flying through the, the sky, the waves lapping up on the beach. This is actually an example of first year work. So pretty good, hey? Hmm. Right, and but this is final year work, realistic interiors. So we have a whole range of projects um, that our students do. At the moment, we're working um, with our final year students on a mid-rise, an eight-storey building, which is commercial at the ground level, has some level, layers of um, basement car parking and has residences above. And so this, this complicated project in our final stage means that our students get a real depth of experience a real, and some really tremendous portfolio work because po the portfolio is very important for job interviews. And uh, yeah, so the skills, um, it's, 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 I know it's pretty hard to imagine that if you were study two years full time, you could go from knowing absolutely nothing about building design and how to draw to creating drawings like these. Now, I mentioned a little bit um, before about cross-laminated timber, and that's something that we've uh, worked very closely with industry to bring experts in to train our students and to train our teachers, because this is really an emerging technology. Uh, we, um, we pride ourselves on um, getting out there and knowing about stuff before, um, before others do so that we can teach it. So we're experts in building information modelling and we're experts in um, uh, sustainability and also in prefabricated timber construction. So you've got a whole, you'll have a whole breadth of a whole lot of different teachers with different areas of expertise, but all very passionate about building good building design and sustainability.
Yes, so this is a, back to a technical working drawing. This is a technical working drawing from Sarush, who you saw earlier in the PowerPoint, who um, went on to win the best technical working drawings in the state. And these were, this is a sample of his um, drawings. Uh, we do have the opportunity for uh, global exchange. So we have some, um, we have a relationship with an, uh, a, a college over in Calgary in Canada and also um, VIA in Denmark. And so there's an opportunity for people to have an exchange or for, go for a three week uh, experience each year overseas as part of a global exchange. And this is our beautiful building. Uh, we have state-of-the-art um, facilities, beautiful computers, uh, lovely colour printer, plan printing. Um, you don't need to whip yourself off to office works and spend any money there. The materials fees that you pay that are embedded in your uh, educational costs will cover all your printing. Yeah, so I've shown you a lot of colour, beautiful colour pictures. It, well, I think we're getting pretty close to the time where you start to ask me questions. So I'm going to have a little look in the chat and see whether or not we've got some questions. I can't see any at this point. Now, I think I'm going to hand over um, at this point, while you're thinking of your questions and you're starting to uh, and you're starting to type them in, I'm going to hand over to um, a design team, and they're going to uh, run you through how we actually enrol. Okay. Ready to apply at Box Hill Institute? The first step is to contact us by calling 1300 Box Hill, submitting an inquiry through our website or via live chat. We're here to answer all your questions and ensure we find a course that's right for you. We will email you an application pack, which will include a link to start your application. The application will take about 30 minutes to complete and submit. Make sure you have your ID and your proof of residency handy, such as your Medicare card or your passport, as you'll need to upload a photo of this to your application. As part of the application pack, you may be required to complete a language literacy numeracy profile. This is to ensure that you meet the entry requirements into the course and for us to support you in your studies. The profile will take you around 90 minutes and must be completed in one sitting. The other one is a pre-training review document, which will ask you questions about your interests, your aspirations, your career goals, and your prior study. Once completed, you will need to upload both documents to your online application. Depending on the course that you're applying for, you may be required to submit extra documents, such as a subject selection form, a workplace declaration form, or an under 18 parent slash guardian consent form. You may also be required to watch an online information session as part of your course. This will be discussed with you when you inquire. Once your application has been submitted, you may be required to attend an interview or an audition remotely. We will contact you if you're required to do this. After this, our team will be in touch to book an appointment to finalise your application. This appointment will be conducted over the phone where we will run you through the pre-training review. This will include timetable information, fees and student support. Once we have finalised your application, we will email you a conditional letter of offer. You'll need to follow the steps to accept your offer online. To finalise your enrolment, you'll need to make payment. There are several ways to do this, such as a payment plan or VET student loan. We look forward to welcoming you to Box Hill Institute. Okay, um, I, um, I, I think you can hear me again. Is that right? Give me some affirmation, somebody that um, I'm back on. Right, now I'm going to have a little look in the, um, in the chat section. Uh, and 
Uh, I actually can't see any questions in the uh, in the chat section. So let me, am I in the wrong spot? Let me try and have a look in the question section. Ah, what I can find, I found one now, here we go. What software are the technical drawings created in? Right, when you're in first year, you start by learning the most basic software um, for technical drawings and that's AutoCAD. Now AutoCAD's been around for many, many years and most offices across Australia have some, some people using AutoCAD. So it's a basic skill and it's 2D. So that gets you started. And then um, by the second half of your first year, you're using Revit. And Revit is, um, is, work, is a 3D modelling software. And by learning how to use Revit, it means you can you can't cheat. You can't draw something in the plan and draw something in the elevation because you're drawing the whole building. Uh, and so, yeah, we um, we focus on initially AutoCAD, moving as quickly as we can into Revit, uh, which is used by architects uh, all across the world <clears throat> and engineers all across the world. Uh, the Autodesk products, which include AutoCAD, Revit, 3ds Max, and quite a few more um, are very strong tools uh, that um, are used internationally. Uh, we, um, <clears throat> yeah, the the we then from a Revit model, you know, and you can use something called Live Sync, and you can synchronise your work into other software um, packages for doing the um, the beautiful internal and external renders. Yes. Okay. So. <clears throat> Uh, now, uh, perhaps the panel will help me if I'm missing any of the questions because I can't, that's the only question I can see at the moment. Mm. Okay. I'm having a little look. Ah, here we go. Um, do students get internship training with the industry players and are they paid? No. Okay, so we know um, you don't, and every student isn't expected to get an internship. There's not a, a demand for a student to go out there and, and they don't have to have industry experience as part of the qualification. The main thing that they need to do is pass all their assessment tasks and get their portfolio of work together. We encourage students um, to get some paid work um, because if you're a full-time student here, you would study three days a week. Okay, that leaves you two weekdays to work somewhere else. But there is a, a large homework component. So for every hour that you're um, studying, you're probably going to give yourself at least half an hour to an hour of additional work. The drawings do take a long time, especially when you're getting started. So uh, the um, once you get your um, Advanced Diploma of Building Design Certificate, then you work in industry paid, of course, for two years uh, minimum, and then you can apply to the Victorian um, uh, Building Authority and become a registered building practitioner in your right. So the minimum qualification to become a registered building designer is the qualification, the Advanced Diploma of Building Design, and the two years minimum experience, and then you can run your own business uh, in your own right, get your insurances, um, design and uh, and put building and planning permits in for your clients. Yeah, so this is the this is the pathway to, um, if you choose to, is to running your own business in building design. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm, I'm checking out. I'm checking out the feeds. I am not seeing a lot of questions. Am I missing anything here, guys? Ah, I found one. Okay, when will the class start for the part time? Okay, the first the first day back. Um, is mid-July after the school holidays. The very first day back is um, the 13th of July. Yep. So we have our orientation program on the 13th of July and you'll be starting the classes that very same day. And for, um, for part-time, 
uh, it was also that that same week and you would be encouraged if you could get the if you could get the um, the half day off work um, on the Monday you'd be encouraged to come to that orientation session as well um, so then the uh, the main classes are on the Wednesday afternoon for the e the part-time group and then on the Thursday evenings Is it possible to get one year exemption if student transfers to architecture degree in Australia? Ah, so you're thinking, is this a, a good pathway to get into an architectural degree? Um, every, uh, every university has a different policy on how they might accept people and give credit to transfers. So um, in particular, um, uh, we have a relationship with Deakin University and finishing this qualification, so finishing this qualification and then moving to Deakin, um, there would be a certain number of credit points. So it would shorten, definitely shorten the length of time that you need to, um, to study at university. So it's a cost effective um, alternative, um, particularly, um, yeah, so and we have our students have excelled at Melbourne University. They've gone to all all the all the different architectural schools um, afterwards and uh, have put together beautiful portfolios. So each of often the um, the architectural schools will be interested in interviewing and looking at people's portfolio work before offering a place. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, here's a question. Will the online classes be recorded? Yes, at the moment we are recording uh, the online classes and that's very useful for um, uh, in this situation where we have a lot of people who might have kids at home and they've been homeschooling them, um, waiting for the schools to open and so on. So we use a range of platforms. We've been using one called WizIQ and also using MS Teams. So um, every now and then we forget to record or the recording fails for some reason but I'd say about at the moment about 90% of the classes that we're doing are being recorded yeah. and they're all interactive so um, when you know we, when we say it's online learning it isn't like you step yourself through a program it's all about a teacher explaining what to do uh, doing the powerpoints and then it's screen sharing and helping with people with software so it's a two-way the students can screen share their work to have a problem solved <clears throat> okay that was the last question in the list all right well I'd like to thank you all for um for coming to listen to our webinar today um we've got two more in the series we have one all around our prefabricated timber program and we have one all around our BIM program so um yeah keep looking at those emails that come flicking your way and join us for our next webinars and the PowerPoint is available to download in the handouts section here so if you want to click on the PowerPoint and download that go for it and yeah and I'm looking forward to meeting some of you hopefully all of you soon uh, and helping you through the enrollment process whether we get you started mid-year or we see you at the beginning of next year yeah all good okay radio then thank you for joining us